Good day, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss how interest rates are determined. Interest rates are determined by the demand for and supply of loanable funds. Investors demand funds in order to finance capital assets that they believe will increase output and generate profit. Simultaneously, consumers demand loanable funds because they have a positive rate of time preference. So they prefer earlier availability, all right? So again, investors or businessmen demand funds because they need that for, uh, for their businesses, for expansion of their businesses, right? And consumers demand loanable funds because they have the positive rate of time preference, okay? So the demand of investors for loanable funds stems from the productivity of capital. Investors are willing to borrow in order to finance the use of capital in production because they expect that expanding future output will provide them with more than enough resources to repay the amount borrowed or the principal and the interest on the loan. So this is an example, okay, when a credit becomes good, okay? Uh, it is good credit or good loan when you borrow money for the purpose of uh, creating more money, okay? So you borrow money because you are going to invest that money to a certain business, right? So the interest that you pay for the loan is, of course, lesser than the uh, profit that you will be gaining from engaging into that business, all right? So that becomes, a, uh, that is a good credit, right? Because a bad credit is when you borrow money, you pay for the interest at very high rate, and you use that money to, to room around, to buy gadgets that would depreciate and will not give you uh, extreme uh, income, or you're going to just buy that for the for for luxury. Okay. So here it is for business purposes. All right. So okay. This figure illustrates that the interest rate brings the choices of investors and consumers wanting to borrow funds into harmony with the choices of lenders willing to supply funds, all right? So there is that supply and the demand, okay? So again, investors, okay? This figure illustrates the interest rate brings the choices of investors and consumers wanting to borrow funds into harmony with the choices of lenders willing to supply funds. So higher interest rates make it more costly for investors to undertake capital spending projects and for consumers to buy now rather than later, okay? So of course, because the purpose of the investors why they borrow money is to, uh, is to earn profit. So if the interest rate is very high, the profit that, would, that they would be gaining from engaging into the business would be lesser. So the profit margin is less. Unlike if the interest rate for the loan is lower, so the profit that they will be getting from engaging into the business is high. Unless they are going to 
transfer the uh, interest to the consumer. So their products would have uh, would be costly because uh, they are going to uh, they're going to put a high markup okay, to their products or services because they have uh, loans to repay with a very high interest rate, all right? So both investors and consumers will therefore curtail their borrowing as the interest rate rises. So investors will borrow less because some investment projects that would be profitable at a low interest rate will be unprofitable at higher rates. And some consumers will reduce their current consumption rather than pay the high interest premium when the interest rate increases, okay? So if you are a consumer, when the interest rate increases, so you will just, uh, you will not avail the loans because the interest rate is very high, okay? If you are just an end consumer. So you will limit your spending, your consumption, right? Therefore, the amount of funds demanded by, by borrowers is inversely related to the interest rate, okay? The amount of funds demanded by borrowers is inversely related to the interest rate. Okay. Right. So the interest rate also rewards people. Who are these people? The lenders. Okay. Willing to reduce their current consumption in order to provide loanable funds to others. If some people are going to borrow in order to undertake an investment project or consume more than their current income, others must curtail their current consumption by an equal amount, right? For example, uh, Pedro, okay? Pedro is a lender, right? So that Pedro can lend money to Maria, okay? Pedro must curtail his current consumption. So if Maria will going to borrow 100,000, so Pedro should, should not spend 100,000 pesos, okay? Because he is going to lend that money to Maria, okay? Is that what it means? In essence, the interest rate provides lenders with the incentive to reduce their current consumption so that borrowers can either invest or consume beyond their present income. Okay, again, the interest rate provides lenders with the incentive to reduce their current consumption so that borrowers can either invest or consume beyond their present income. Because the lenders, of course, they are going to um, have that interest, interest, okay? They're not going to lend their money, let's say 100,000 pesos. You're going to pay that for 100,000 pesos. Of course, there is an interest for that. So that interest is the incentive, okay? It's the incentive of the lender because the lender reduce its current consumption because uh, so that he has something to um, provide or to lend to the borrowers so that the borrowers can either invest or consume beyond their present income. So higher interest rates give people willing to save so the willing to supply loanable funds, the ability to purchase more goods in the future in exchange for sacrificing current consumption. So even though people have a positive rate of time preference, they will give up current consumption to supply funds to the loanable funds market 
if the price is right. Okay. So let's say if the interest rate is 10%. So if you are the lender, okay, so you're going to, uh, to lend your money because it would earn you a 10% interest. Okay. So you are, you are going to curtail your consumption or you're going to lessen your consumption, right? So higher interest rates will induce people to save more. Now why? Because, uh, because, you, because the higher interest rate means that if you're going to borrow money, you're going to pay more, okay? So in order to, in order to uh, prevent that, you're going to save money. So therefore, as the interest rate as the interest rate rises, the quantity of funds supplied to the loanable funds market will increase. So here, as the interest rate rises, the quantity of funds available to the um, the quantity of funds supplied to the loanable funds market will increase okay. this one so interest rate increase the loanable funds will also increase okay so as illustrated in this figure the interest rate will bring the quantity of funds demanded in balance with the quantity supplied. So this is the equilibrium at okay, this point. At the e equilibrium interest rate, the quantity of funds borrowers demand for investment and consumption now, okay, consumption now rather than later, will just equal the quantity of funds lenders save. So interest rate brings the choices of borrowers and lenders into harmony. So the rate of interest functions as the price in the money market. Money has a time value. Okay? Have you heard of the time value of money? And its use is bought and sold in the money market in return for the payment of interest. Okay. So the financial institutions that deal in government securities and loans, gold and foreign exchange make up the money market. So the money market is not a specific physical location, but consists of transactions made electronically or by phone. So equilibrium in the money market occurs when the, okay, so look at here. Next figure. So the equilibrium in the money market occurs when the MD, this one, money demanded and MS, money supplied curves intersect at the equilibrium interest rate. So this one, the equilibrium interest rate. Okay. So if the BSP or the Banco Central ng Pilipinas were to decide to increase the quantity of money from, okay, so if the BSP will decide to increase the quantity of money from here, so money supplied from here to here, the supply of money curve would shift to the right, okay resulting in a decrease in the equilibrium interest rate. So from here to here, so as you can see for this one, so the interest rate, the equilibrium interest rate is here. So when the BSP decide to increase the quantity of money to here, the equilibrium interest rate would decrease. Okay. So the lower cost of borrowing could spur higher consumption and investment. So the equilibrium interest rate goes from here to here. As the money supply curve shifts 
to the right. Okay. The interest rate decreases as the money supply increases. Okay, so example, when the BSP increases the quantity of money, all right? So according to Keynesian theory, the rate of interest is determined as a price in two markets. First is the investment funds. The rate of interest balances the demand for funds or the required for investment and the supply of funds or from savings. So if investors can earn a 10% return on a capital investment project, example, building a factory, they will be willing to pay a rate of interest of up to 10%, right? So households delay consumption by saving, okay? And are rewarded by earning interest depending on their time preference and the rate of interest. So savings percentages can differ significantly from one nation to another, all right? So how about liquid assets? So the other market liquid assets. So households and businesses may have reasons to hold assets in liquid form. Example, readily available money. Because borrowers require cash in the long term that doesn't need to be repaid to the lender immediately, they are willing to compensate lenders for giving up liquidity. So Kenneth introduced the influence of the liquidity preference on the interest rate. So the classical economist who considered investment funds as the critical market for the interest rate disregarded the topic of liquidity preference. So although intermediaries, intermediaries, financial intermediaries, okay, banks, financial institutions, can achieve equality between the rates of interest in two markets, the potential lack of balance between the investment and money markets was essential to Keynesians, who claimed that it caused unemployment in the short run. Right. Okay, so that's all for the for how interest rates are determined. Right. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that I hope that you learned something from this one. Thank you.